أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المخدوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين السلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وعلى يسحب أجمعين all praise is due to Allah, Lord and Sustainer of the worlds. Abundance of salutations be upon the last and final messenger, Sayyidina Mawlana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abundance of salutations be upon his noble purified household, his companions, and upon the beloved friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Salutations be upon my master, Hazrat Khaja Makhdoom Alauddin Ali Hamad Sabir Kalyari Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and upon my spiritual mentors, Hazrat Khaja Sayyid Muhammad Shah Chisti Sabri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, and Hazrat Ghulam Jilani Chisti Sabri Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this program, Bustani Awliya, in which we feature on the lives and anecdotes of the beloved friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, in our past episodes, we have been discussing the nur of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how the nur had descended and we were discussing the birth of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and regarding the miraculous events that had taken place during his birth. So Alhamdulillah, while researching uh, this topic on the birth of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have come across some uh, interesting waqiyas with regards to certain dreams that the grandfather of the Holy Prophet sallallahu had uh, had had, and uh, some of the uh, and a dream that the father of the Holy Prophet sallallahu had. So this, inshallah, I wish uh, to uh, uh, narrate these incidents to you as well as regarding some of the miraculous events that had taken place during the birth of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So some uh, uh, most of the of the narrations that I will be narrating today, uh, almost all of them are found in uh, Mawahib al uh, which is a uh, kitab written on the seerah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, by one of the great Imams and that is Imam Kastalani and some of the waqiyas are also found uh, in the uh, Qasais al-Kubra of uh, Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti rahmatullahi ta'ala ali, and also in Madari jun Nubuwa of Hazrat Sheikh Abdul Haq Muhaddis Delvi rahmatullahi ta'ala ali. so these stories that I'm about to narrate are found in these kitabs on the seerah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala the uncle of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he narrates regarding a dream that his father uh, Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib had had uh, before prior to the birth of uh, Sayyidina Abdullah and prior to the birth of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says that he narrates that one day my father Abdul Muttalib lay asleep in his room when suddenly he awoke trembling. So when he awoke he hurried uh, putting his clothes on and he went to a person who could interpret the dreams in Makkah Sharif. So Abdul Muttalib then narrated the dream that he had seen. So he says that I saw a great white chain rise up at my back, which then divided into four branches stretching to the east, to the west, up into the sky and down into the ground. While I gazed at this vision, I saw it change into a great green tree of great beauty. All sorts of fruits were growing upon its branches as we found in all the parts of the world such a tree of marvels has never been seen before all people of the world bowed down before it Arabs and non-Arabs alike and they all perform prostration in front of this tree from moment to moment its light grew stronger among the people I saw also the tribe of the Quraysh one group clung to the branches of the tree while another group gathered round trying to cut down this beautiful tree. Someone I have never seen step forward to prevent them as he was more beautiful than anyone I have ever seen. I stretch out my hand to take hold of that bit of light and I asked that beautiful person whose portion of light that would be. And he answered me that it would fall to those who were, cling, who were clinging to the branch of that tree. Then I just stood gazing at the beauty of that person. And as I looked on, I saw two great and venerable great leaders by the foot of the tree. They too were radiant with inner beauty. 
I asked them who they were. One of them said, I am Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, and the other said, I am Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. When my father had finished telling this dream to the dream interpreter, his face went pale. He then said, the dream interpreter then said, if your dream is a true one, it means that the prophet of the last time will come to the world through you. The whole world, east and west, the earth and the heavens will testify to his prophethood and accept to be part of his nation. He will ascend to the heavens during his lifetime, meaning the miraculous journey of the Maharaj. And in the end, he will pass into the other world and his body will remain to be buried in the ground. One faction of the Quraysh will accept his prophethood while, the, while an, another will not and they will be vanquished. The radiant person you saw in, uh, is the religion of Islam. Thereby, they will be crushed and vanquished. The Prophet Nuh standing at the foot of that tree means that those opposing the Prophet to come will be drowned as were the people of Nuh in a flood of trials and affliction. The Prophet Ibrahim standing at the foot of the tree means that those who follow the coming Prophet will be honored by belonging to the nation of Nabi Ibrahim salam, and he will attain their innermost desires. This Prophet will bring with him a law that will be safe from, uh, from changes and on the last day it will stand out as, in, uh, as a clear proof. This law and his nation will stand until the last day has come. This religion is true and it is the light and easy to and it is light and easy to bear. This is how the dream interpreter interpreted the dream of Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib. So then it is said that when when this news now went about uh, about the coming of the final prophet was near. So it is said that uh, in, in Syria, the Christians and the scholars at that time believed that they had a sign that they believed that if this sign was made manifest then it was also known that the time of the of the last prophet was coming uh, of the last prophet to make his arrival was coming clear so what did the people in uh, syria possess they possessed a garment that belonged to sayyidina yahya alayhi salam and as it is known that sayyidina yahya alayhi salam was martyred and he was actually cut into pieces and the garment that he that he was wearing they had kept as a holy religion. So this garment had the, the blood of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam on it and over a period of time this blood had dried up. So in their scriptures, in the holy scriptures of the people of the past, it was narrated and the prediction said that a day will come when this blood of Sayyidina Yahya alayhi salam will once again become fresh and it will and when it begins to flow from the garment they know that this is a clear sign that the era of the final prophet has arrived so it is said that the the, the, the people of syria they would look at this garment quite often and the night when sayyidina abdullah meaning the father of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in makkah the blood on the cloak of sayyidina yahya alayhi salam in syria became fresh and began to flow and it was on this night that the people in Syria took counsel as this is a clear sign regarding the birth of, of, of the father of the Holy Prophet wasallam. So what should they do? So it is here that they had taken counsel that they had intended to kill uh, the, the, the father of the Holy Prophet wasallam, Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala. And alhamdulillah in our, in our past episode, I had discussed that how Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala was divinely protected from the harm of the people who had intended to kill Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala. So also, after the birth of Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala, he had also uh, seen a vision and a dream. And the dream that he saw uh, was that and, and, and this dream he had narrated to his beloved father. So he tells his father that in a dream I saw that I came to a place in Makkah where I saw a light rise up from behind me. It divided in half and became two branches. One went to the east and one went to the west. This light spread all over the world and yet in less than a second it returned rolling itself up in a ball and hovering over my head.
I saw the gates of heaven open and this light rose up and des descended again into my back. Also, every time I sit down, I hear a voice coming out from the ground that says to me, Greetings be upon you. The light of Muhammad وسلم, is with you and in your care. Every time I sit down beneath a tree and a barren fig tree, it comes back to life and springs again, sprouting leaves so that I have shade. When I get up and leave, it instantly dies and withers away. So apart from the dream, these were signs that Sayyidina Abdullah had experienced that even the ground that he used to sit on used to salute him and if he rested his back against a dry barren tree, this dry tree would become alive. So all these signs Sayyidina Abdullah had told his beloved father, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. So hearing these uh, signs that were experienced by his own son, he said to his son that if your vision is, tr is true, then it confirms the dream that I saw and had interpreted and according to what you are indeed going to be the father of the blessed child that has been promised and you are going to be the father of the prophet of the final era. So these were signs uh, that were shown to the beloved grandfather and the beloved father of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then as Alhamdulillah uh, we had, had, had discussed last two, in, in our last episode that on the night that the Noor of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was placed into the womb of Sayyida Amina Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha and it is a consensus by the great ulama that they say that it is by the virtue of uh, uh, this light coming into the womb of Sayyida Amina and that being on a Thursday evening that it makes Thursday evening even more sacred than Laylatul Qadr. So according to Imam Kastalani Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi and he says that why is Laylatul Qadr uh, even greater, uh, uh, why is the night in which the Noor of the Holy Prophet وسلم, coming into the womb of uh, Sayyida Amina greater than even Laylatul Qadr? So it is said that it is because of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and it is because uh, by his virtue that we have Laylatul Qadr. If it was not for the Holy Prophet وسلم, then we would not even have the night of Laylatul Qadr. So that which precedes it, meaning the coming of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is greater than something that comes after it. So therefore, a Thursday night in which the Noor of the Holy Prophet وسلم, was placed in the womb of Sayyida Amina actually uh, precedes in auspiciousness the night of Laylatul Qadr. So it is said that on that night of uh, when, when the Noor of, of uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was placed uh, in the womb of uh, Sayyida Amina. So Sahal ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala reports that when, when this Noor was placed in the womb of Sayyida Amina, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the guardian of paradise and the doors of the gates of paradise be opened. And he commanded the guardian of paradise to open wide its gate and to give all the inhabitants of Jannah the glad tidings of the coming of the final messenger and the coming of the Holy Prophet So this good news was spread to all who lived and dwelt in heaven also upon the earth that this very night the Noor of the Holy Prophet descended into the womb of Sayyida Amina, thus the Rahmatul Alameen, meaning the mercy upon the worlds, was conceived and ready to be born to earth. So this uh, uh, shows that even uh, the auspiciousness of this Noor coming to the womb of of Sayyida Amina was so great that even on this night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself ordered that Jannah be opened and ordered that this good news and great news be given to all the inhabitants of paradise and even all the inhabitants on earth. Then it is said that on this night, that when the Noor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam descended into the body of Sayyida Amina, so it was, a, 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 it was a, a, the, the Malaika called out to the people that perfume and fragrance your homes as this night marks the future coming of the Blessed Prophet and celebrate 
in the lower world with festivity the coming of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it is stated that also a number of miraculous events were seen uh, in makkatul mukarrama during this event so amongst them it is said that one uh, some of the events that had taken place that animals in makkah all spoke fluently in human language on the night of conception and they all said by the lord of the kaaba Tonight, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is conceived in the womb of Sayyida Amina, the guiding light of the world, and the greatest star of guidance of the entire universe has been conceived in the womb of Sayyida Amina. So it is said that that night, wild beasts even congratulated one another on the coming of the mercy of the of the worlds. That night, the thrones of kings of the worlds shook and trembled. The idols fell down upon their faces and broke. Many of the buildings, many of the churches and the roofs collapsed. Many of the soothsayers and people who used to uh, uh, speak about events of the future, their tongues beca became tied. And all the sorcerers uh, and soothsayers, soothsayers assembled and held counsel debating that this is indeed the events and signs of the coming of the final prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so sayyida amina radiyallahu ta'ala anha the blessed mother of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that she would hear heavenly voices calling to her at the beginning of every month of her pregnancy and that seemed to come from above and from below as well and these voices used to say to her blessings upon you blessings be upon you and glad tidings be upon you O mother of the future prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so sayyida amina radiallahu ta'ala anha narrates and she says that during her pregnancy i first became pregnant in the month of rajab so Sayyidah Amina says that she became pregnant in the month of Rajab. One night as I lay sleeping, I saw a fair-faced man entering my chamber. He gazed at my heart and pointed to my womb and said, Assalamu alaikum ya Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I asked upon this person, who are you? And he answered, I am the father of mankind, I am Nabi Adam alayhi salam and I have come to give you the glad news that you are now pregnant with the crowd of creation, the prince of all the worlds. Then she said, at the start of the second month of my pregnancy, I saw another man enter my room. He was very calm and dignified and shone with great light and beauty. He gazed at my heart and spoke. Peace be upon you, O much, o much beloved. Assalamu alaikum, O goal of all the desires. I asked this person who he was, and he answered, I am Nabi Shis alayhi salam. O Amina, and I have come to confirm the joyful auspicious prediction, for you are to become the mother of the best of all prophets. At the beginning of my third month, again I saw a person of immense beauty and very dignified, and he too gazed at my heart and spoke and said, Assalamu alaikum ya ayyuham muzammil. Assalamu alaikum ya ayyuhal mudassir. I then asked this person who he was and he said, I am Nabi Idris alayhi salam. And I have come to bring to you the joyous news that you are carrying the prince of all prophets who is invested with the mercy and compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the beginning of my fourth month of my pregnancy, a person of a darker complexion appeared in my room, who was of very, very gentle, and and who was of a very gentle nature. He looked at my heart and made a sign to the unborn child within my womb and greeted, "Assalamu alaikum, O choicest of the created beings." I asked this person who he was, and he answered, "I am Prophet Noah alayhi salam." Good news and joyful tidings to you, O Amina, who, are, who is to be the mother of the most celebrated and victorious prophet of the last times. In my fifth month, I beheld another person entering my chamber, 
whose perfect grace and lighted features were absolutely beautiful. He too gazed at my heart and signaled to my womb and said, Assalamu alaikum, O seal of the prophets. I asked this person, Who are you? And he answered, I am Nabi Hud alayhi salam. And I compliment you, O Sayyida Amina, on your good fortune of bearing the most praiseworthy of all prophets who excels in generosity. In the sixth month of my pregnancy, a person uh, who was also very radiant entered into my room, gazed at my heart and addressed my unborn child. Peace be upon you, O Habibullah, O beloved of Allah. I asked this person, who he might be and he answered I am Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam O Amina the friend of Allah and I give you tidings of your bright future you are to become the mother of the mighty prophet who has been given fairness and boldness in my seventh month another beautiful person entered my chamber whose features were gentle and very pleasing this man looked at my heart and addressed the child within me and he said assalamu alaikum o prophet of allah o true friend of allah when i asked this man who he was he said i am nabi ismail alayhi salam o amina the offering to allah i have come to you to give you the joyous news that you are to become the mother of a very warm mild tempered prophet whose tongue excels in eloquency and whose portion is mercy in my eighth month, when my eighth month began, a man came to my apartment who was, who was tall and had good features. He gazed at my heart and spoke to the unborn child within me and said, Assalamu alaikum, O beloved of Allah, O mighty prophet of Allah. I asked him, Who might you be, O noble one? So he said, I am Nabi Musa alayhi salam, the son of Imran. And I bring to you the good tidings that you are to be the mother of the great prophet upon whom will be revealed the Holy Quran. At the beginning of the ninth month, again a person entered my room whose garment was made of pure wool. He gazed at my heart and spoke to my child. And he greeted saying, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I asked this person, who are you? And he said, I am Isa, the son of Maryam, the Masiha. Best and glad tidings to you, O Amina, the time is near that you will give birth. So prepare yourself and make yourself ready for the coming of the best prophets. So it is said that in that year when Sayyida Amina became pregnant, the people endured great hardship and drought and famine, and there was a great deal of tribal warfare. So when Sayyida Amina conceived, then all the troubles suddenly ceased and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down from heaven the blessings of rain and the land was refreshed and food prices came down. Because of the relief they experienced in that year, the people called that year the year of solving of difficulties. So favorable was this year that all the women who were pregnant also gave birth to sons. So Alhamdulillah, here we find that even prior to the birth of the Holy Prophet وسلم, these miraculous events had taken place whereby even these great prophets had come to visit Sayyida Amina to give her the glad tidings of the coming of the Holy Prophet and as it is mentioned here as well that during uh, prior to this uh, period it was a period of great difficulty but when Sayyida Amina had conceived the nur of the Holy Prophet وسلم, rains had come and all this tribal warfare had come to end which means that Rasulullah وسلم, being the mercy upon all the worlds had brought this mercy and joy to this world so Alhamdulillah inshallah in our next episode we will discuss uh, a little bit further uh, with regards to the miraculous events that had taken place during the birth of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala increase in our hearts love for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and love for the beloved friends of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa Sallallahu Ta'ala ala khairi khalqi wa nur yashihi Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadu wa alihi wa sahbihi jma'in Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.